the Johnson Wax Program, Words at War with Clifton Fadiman. Makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, proudly present Words at War, bringing you another dramatization of an important war book. And here to introduce our program is one of the keenest judges of good books in America, Clifton Fadiman. Fadiman. Good evening. Just a few years ago, a German with a trick mustache looked across the sea at us and sneered. What have I to fear from America, he chortled. America is soft. Their youth is soft. How can they stand up against my young men trained and hardened for war? Did anybody agree with Herr Hitler? Yes, at the time, many Americans did. We couldn't see how our boys could possibly be a match for Germany's professional soldiers, for Japan's fanatical fighters. But what happened? Well, we'll see tonight. First, Jack Costello with a message from our sponsor. Friends, it's so easy to put things off, isn't it? Take your automobile, for example. How many times have you said to yourself lately that it ought to be cleaned and polished? Well, why not get out a pencil and paper right now and make a note to buy a package of Johnson's Car New this week, tomorrow? It just takes an hour or two at the end of the day to give your car a thoroughgoing beauty treatment with Carnew. This easy-to-use polish does two jobs at once. It both cleans and polishes with one application. When your car is washed, you apply Carnew with a cloth, rubbing only as much as necessary to loosen the dirt. Carnew dries to a white powder, and when you wipe off this powder, you will really be surprised to find that the finish shines like a mirror. It'll be some time yet before you'll be buying a new car. And even then, keeping up the finish with Carnew will help your trade-in. Ask your dealer for Johnson's Carnew, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Mr. Fadiman? Tonight on the Johnson Wax Program, Words at War, we bring you the story of one American fighting man. But perhaps in a way, it's the story of them all. Our book is called One Man Air Force. It's the personal story of Captain Don S. Gentile, who came off the high school football fields of Pequay, Ohio, to become one of America's top aces of the air. Take a look at him. There he is, the typical young American who proved Hitler and Tojo wrong. And how wrong. Hey, look, there's Gentilly riding up ahead of the parade. Yeah. Say, I remember that kid playing football for Central High. Yes, Don Gentilly was home from the wars, home in Pickway, Ohio, and his neighbors turned out in force to greet him. I remember him flying that airplane of his around town. He was a crazy kid. He sure was. <laughs> 23 years old and one of the big heroes of the war. You wouldn't have thought it, would you? He was a quiet kind of a kid. Yeah. Quiet on the ground, yeah. Ever see him fly an airplane? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> they call him gentle, I read in the papers. Because he's kind of shy, you know. Wasn't very shy when he tangled with those nets. Hey, 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 look. He's blushing. (laughs) Yes, he was blushing. The conquering hero come home. He was the same kid, this Don Gentile. Didn't want to talk much, but they made him. What's it like up there, Don? I mean, when you really tangle with the other fellow. Oh, you mean a dog fight? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I I guess it's simple in theory, anyway. You see the enemy, you grab for his coattails and hold on to them, put your guns up against his back pocket and press the trigger. But while you're reaching for his coattails, he's reaching for yours. You make your grab, and he twirls out of the way and into position to make his grab, and then you twirl with a twist that'll put you in a fair way to grab him, and so on and so on. Grab, twirl, twist. Grab, twirl, twist. For ten minutes, maybe fifteen. Your machine against his, your mind against his, your body against his, until at last somebody has grabbed hold for good. And then the other fella starts to die. Look, 
Look, Don, answer me this, will you? How come you got to be a flyer? I mean, when did you get interested in it anyway? Oh, uh, gosh, I can't remember when I wasn't interested in flying. Could I see a menu, Patsy? Right away, you bet. And what's good tonight, Patsy? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything is always good here. Uh, you asked me about how I got started flying. Well, first I got to tell you about my dad and mother. They're really wonderful. Dad came over to this country when he was 14, and he got a job as water boy for the gas company in Columbus. Oh, he and Mom gave me and my sister Edith the swell home, and he managed somehow to save money, too. Well, by the time repeal came, he had enough to do what he always wanted to do. Get a restaurant of his own. <laughs> Here you are, Don. Take these menus over to the table, will you? Sure, Dad. See, um, I was a bashful kid, and... Not good at meeting people. Uh, that's why Dad had me come down to the restaurant to help out and meet people. Everybody liked Dad. They they call him Patsy. <laughs> he knew it'd be good for me to talk to people. Say, Don. Yes, sir? What kind of a football team are you going to have over at Central High this year? Oh, pretty good, I think. Uh, we got a lot of lettermen back. We ought to be pretty fair, I guess. Well, you're going out for the team, aren't you, Don? Well, sure, I guess so. You guess so? I thought you were nuts about football. Oh, I, I like football a lot, I... I'm not nuts about it. What I'm really nuts about is... Well, anyway, we'll, we'll have a good team. Well, what are you really nuts about? Oh, oh, nothing. Say, pardon me, I think Dad wants me here. You know, he's a funny kid. Always looks like he's got something on his mind. Yeah, he does it fast. Hey, Dad, could I talk to you a minute? Huh? Oh, sure, Don. What do you want? Dad, I want to ask you something. Oh, go ahead. What is it? Uh, you want to make a touch, maybe, huh? <laughs> Take that little girl down the street out for a date, huh? <laughs> no, Dad, I... I want to take flying lessons out at the airport. Oh, sure. Hey, what do you mean? You want to take a flying lessons? Airplane? Yeah, Dad, in an airplane. Hey, what's the big idea, Don? Well, Dad, it's just something I want to do. I, I think it's something I just got to do. Dad, I, I want to fly more than anything in the world. I can get a half hour's lesson every Sunday for $10. $10 for one half hour? That's a lot of money, Don. Oh, you wouldn't have to pay it, Dad. I got the money saved. You know, the money you gave me for dates? Well, I, I didn't spend all that. I I saved most of it. I've got the money. Oh, I see. I give you $10 to take that nice little girl to dinner in a picture show? What do you do? You take her for a walk. <laughs> well, yeah, but she doesn't mind. Dad, can I? I don't know. It's a lot of money. And it's dangerous, Don. You might fall down have a crash. I don't like it. Oh, it's not dangerous, Dad. Really, it isn't. It's not any more dangerous than driving a car. How about it, Dad? Will you let me do it? I don't know. Your mama wouldn't like this, Don. I don't think she'd like it much at all. No, Don, forget it for a while. You're just a boy, 17 years old. Look, you play football, take that nice little girl out, you forget about this well, I I can't forget it, Daddy. It's all I'm interested in. I've got to do it. Your mama would never stand for this flying. Oh, you'll help me with mom, won't you, Dad? Well, I don't know. Better get that order over to the table. Okay, Dad. Oh, flying. Now, listen, Mama. I don't like this any more than you do. But Don here, he says he's got to fly. Yeah, Mom. Oh, oh, now, don't look that way. Airplanes are safe, Mom. It's just knowing how to fly them, that's all. Don, what are you talking about? Flying. Who do you think you are? Oh, come on, sis. Don't you be against me. I I'll give you a ride first thing. Hmm. The way you drive a car 100 miles an hour, I wouldn't ride in any airplane with you. Ah, oh, you're scared. Edith is right. Oh, Mom. Mom, tell me it's okay. Is it okay? No. Dad. The boy's got his mind made up, Mama. Sure I have. Is it okay, Mom? Mom, is it okay? Oh, Mom, don't cry. Please, Mom, will you? Oh, please, Mom, don't cry. All right now, Don. We're going to be a landing. Yes, sir, Mr. Jeffries. Hey, watch those trees. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Jeffries. I see them. Thought I'd pick a few leaves off on the way down. <laughs> Don, no stunning. You only had three lessons. Okay, Mr. Jeffries. Oh, 
I tell you, I think I'll retire from the force. What's the matter, Henny? Have you been ill? No, I haven't been ill. But you know what's happened, don't you? Why, no. I've been chasing this Don Gentile lad in his father's automobile for a year. And now what's happened? He's learning to fly an airplane. You think you're awfully smart, don't you, Don Gentile? Oh, sis, lay off me, will you? You know Mom's worried sick about you, don't you? She'll get over it. Hey, listen, Edith, you coming out to see me solo Sunday? No. Boy, oh boy, this is a life. Whee! Mom, I soloed, I soloed, I passed everything. What's the matter? What are you hollering about? I can fly a plane now, Mom, I soloed. Sure, Mommy, solo. Solo? What is this, uh, solo? Is it like uh, singing? Yeah, no. just like that. <laughs> like singing all by yourself, Mom. I flew all by myself, just me and the plane. I flew around, I banked, and I turned, and I landed, sure. and I took off again all by myself. Yes, and Mr. Jeffrey says you're very reckless. Oh, he's just kidding you, sis. I know what I'm doing. Papa. Mr. Jeffrey said he did fine, Mama. He said, Don, he's a born to fly Oh, I was afraid of that. Don, tell me, what does this uh, solo mean now? Well, Mom, it means that I finished my lessons. I don't have to take any more. Oh, oh, that's good. It's all over. It's finished. We just forget the whole thing. Oh, no, Mom, it's not all over. It's just beginning. Just beginning? Sure, Mom. Now I can fly by myself. Now I can get a plane of my own. A plane Don, of what do you own? say? Oh. oh, Mom, don't cry. No, 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 no. Mom, I just got to fly. What's the matter? Are you a pigeon? Nobody's just got to fly. I do, Mom. Really, I do. I'll never be happy doing anything else. That's all I want to do in this world. Don, it's dangerous. No, Mom. I'll be afraid all the time, Don. I'll worry every minute. Maybe you'll be afraid too, Don. It'll make you nervous up there so high. No, Mom. That's just it. Please try to understand. I'm more afraid on the ground. I'm more nervous of things on the ground. The air, Mom. The air to me is what the ground is to other people. I don't feel sure on the ground. In the air, I, I, I feel sure of everything. Flying, Mom, is, li is like fresh air to me. It, it's like food when, when I'm hungry. Like, like strength when, when I'm weak. Mom, I've got to fly. I've got to have a plane of my own. Papa. I don't know, Mama. Maybe we better get him the plane. We don't understand these things. Looks like these modern kids, they just got to fly. Oh, thanks, Dad. Thanks. Excuse me, please. Edith, where are you going? I thought I'd better go out and warn the neighbors. Don Gentile is getting a plane of his own. They better start ducking. <laughs> uh, oh, Mom, don't cry. <laughs> This is Clifton Fadiman speaking. Tonight on the Johnson Wax program, we're bringing you a dramatization based on the book One Man Air Force. Primarily, it's the story of one of America's top fighting aces, but in a larger sense, it's also the story of all American boys who fight this war for freedom. So far, we've heard how Don Gentile learned to fly back in Pickway, Ohio, and finally persuaded his parents to let him have his own plane. Now we resume his story. <laughs> Look, Dad, isn't she a beauty? I don't know. An aerosport for four hundred and fifty dollars. Dad, it's a bargain. It's a lot of money. Oh, not for an airplane, Dad. Stand back a little bit. Now watch, watch me take her off. I don't know if I've done the right thing. Ah, oh, sure you have. Well, here I go. Not too fast to done. Okay, Dad. You go see who it is. Sure thing, Mom. Oh. Oh, hello, Officer Haney. How are you? I'm sick, if you want to know. Oh? Oh, I'm sorry. Look here, Don Gentelli. There was an airplane flying around the town today. It almost scalped the mayor. It pretty near took off the steeple of the first Presbyterian. It blew in the curtains on Betty Leverage's house. It knocked over the flowers in Margie Dill's garden. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, now, who could have done that? 
Uh, did you get the number of the plane? How can I get the number of a plane that's going maybe 900 miles an hour? Oh, that's too bad. Then you don't know who it was. Uh, will you cut it out, Don, before you wreck the whole town? <laughs> Hey, sis, how about taking a ride with me, huh? Ride with you in that plane of yours? Never. Don, everybody's talking about the way you fly. You've got Mother worried sick. Why do you have to do that? Oh, I don't take any chances, Edith. Well, if you ask me, you're just plain nuts. I guess I was in a way, but believe it or not, I wasn't trying to show off. Driving fast in my father's car and flying low, stunting putting my brain and my power over a machine against death and telling death, catch me if you can. See, that was the kind of competition I needed to make myself feel alive. I was never nervous or afraid or felt in danger, even when I zipped a wing under the very nose of death. <laughs> I guess I, I was crazy, but I couldn't help it. And then on September 1st, 1939, the big news came... Well, listen, Mom, Dad, you gotta listen. No, no, no. Don, your mom is right. Mom, Dad, listen. No, you can't do it. No, Don. But look, it's war, isn't it? I'm going to be called. I won't have any choice of service. That's good. Then you will be on the ground. Well, sure, Mom, that's just the trouble. I gotta be in the air. Don, now listen, you can't be in the air. You gotta have a college degree to get in the Air Force. But that's just what I mean, Dad. I can't get in the American Air Force because I haven't been to college, but I can get into the Canadian Air Force. No, 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 Canada. Oh, but, Mom, don't you see? That'll give me a chance to fly. I'll have a better chance of staying alive if I fly. Fly, a fly. You talk of nothing but a fly, a fly. Why? Well, I guess that's just the kind of guy I am, Mom. It's airplanes or nothing with me. Anywhere else, I'll, I'll be a round peg in a square hole. Put me in an airplane, I can make something out of myself. That's why I gotta go to Canada, Mom. I gotta fly. I tell you, nobody's got to fly. I do, Mom. Really, I do. Please, look, I, I can go up to Canada and get to be a pilot, and then when we get in the war, I can transfer to our Air Force. But, Don, we're not yet in this war. We will be, Mom. We can't help but be. Okay, then you wait. I can't wait, Mom. Don't you see? Dad, will you tell her, please? No, Don. No, this time she's right. You stay at home. See what happens. Stay at home, boy. Oh, Dad. Well, all that year, while millions of young guys were fighting the Battle of Britain, I was fighting the Battle of Pickway, Ohio. But finally... Oh, Mom, you said you wouldn't cry. Don't go, Don. Don't go. Please, Mom, I've got to. Don, you're a heel. Ah, oh, sis, you... But a kind of a wonderful heel. I'll say goodbye now. Goodbye, sis. Write to me, huh? Uh -huh. You folks better be getting off. We're leaving in just a minute. Better hurry. All right. Come, Mom, say goodbye to Don. Yeah, Mom. Kiss me goodbye. No. No, I want to go. Mom, you got to go. The train's leaving in a minute. Mom, I say goodbye. No. Madam, please. You'll have to get off the train or else buy a ticket. <laughs> ticket? What do I care about a ticket? My boy is going off the water. Been shot at an airplane. I won't let him go. This is not his war. I won't get off the train until he does. Mama, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, hold the train just a minute. She'll get off. Go ahead, Dad, Edith. I'll talk to Mom. All right. I wait outside. All right, Don. Goodbye. I can't hold up trains for anybody. I'll give you one more minute. Mom, listen to me. I don't want to hurt you. This is something I got to do. I'm a flyer. They need flyers. They need every flyer they can get. Look, Mom. Mom, this is bigger than any of us. We got to stop them. Somebody's got to stop them or there won't be anything left at all for any of us. I've got something our side needs, Mom. I've got to fly and help stop them. They'll shoot you. Oh, no, they won't, Mom. Huh? They won't shoot me because I'm better than they are. Oh. Believe me, Mom. They won't get me. Oh, Believe me. All right, Don. May God bless you. <laughs> Ten 
Gentilly got his first today. Gentilly got another. Gentilly got his fifth today. The Huns were smart, most of them. I remember running up against one who was too cagey for me. Well, I, I figured if you can't win by matching your brain against the other guys, then try matching your body. So I went into a dive at 30,000 feet. I knew I'd black out, but I was betting what I had learned playing football in Pickway, Ohio, against what he had learned goose-stepping for Hitler. He had me cold up until then. Ha! <laughs> he couldn't take it. That's an even dozen for Gentilly. Okay, Johnny, here I come. Teamwork. That's what we had. When one guy was being clobbered by a Nazi pilot, there was always another guy ready to clobber the Nazi right back. It worked even when the team had been boiled down to two men. Johnny Godfrey and I spent 20 minutes over Berlin one night in March. Came out of there with six planes destroyed to our credit. Johnny was always sitting on my tail, ready to knock down anybody who tried to bounce me off my kill. Swell guy, Johnny. Hiya, General. That makes 18 for you. Yeah, I'm, that's because I have you for a squadron leader, Spike. <laughs> Thanks, kid. I've got some news for you. I'm being shifted. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, Spike. Gosh, I can't fly for anybody else. Those are the orders, General. And here's another one. Get set for it. You're taking over. Me? Oh, I I can't be squadron leader. Why can't you? Oh, I mean, I... Well, I mean, I'm not the type. I'm a kind of halfback, I guess. I, I can make the end runs, but I can't call the plays. Listen, General, you're a hot pilot. Red hot. You want to make all the touchdowns. That's good. That's natural for a fighter pilot. But here's what you got to learn. You're going to have boys following you who aren't as hot as you are, yet. Just remember that when you take them anywhere. Just remember it's not only your brains that are going to get knocked out, but the brains of the kids who are following you. You can do it, General. Okay, Spike. I'll do it. Spike was right. As squadron leader, I learned more than ever how important teamwork was. We put Spike's lessons into practice... And so, when the bell rang for the big fight against Hitler's Luftwaffe last February, we had as fine a team, I think, as any nation has ever been able to get together. And boy, I can tell you, I'm proud to be a member of it. Our boys had always been eager to fly, just as I had been, but now our enthusiasm was tempered with experience. Each man was confident he would survive because he believed in the team. Yeah, I remember once over Germany after I'd run up my score to 30 planes destroyed. I came on three Messerschmitts sitting up ahead of me. Easiest shots I ever had. Then I saw a Hun clobbering a Mustang pal of mine. Well, I, I dropped the easy kill and I dove on the Hun. I didn't think about it. it was just a reflex action. Something the guys on our side do without thinking. It's just that feeling for team action. I know if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have come through. Eisenhower's decorating Gentilly today. Congratulations, Captain. You've destroyed more enemy planes than any other American in two wars. Congratulations. You're a one-man Air Force. Thank you, sir. Will you look at that? The one-man Air Force is blushing. Yes, he was blushing. Don Gentilly, the ace, was blushing. He'd come home the same kid, shy, self-effacing, unsure of himself, unsure of himself every place but with his own family, with his own family, and in the air. So, here we have an American boy, Don Gentilly, who hurled the Germans' lie back into their teeth. He was a match for any Superman. He was sold on flying, and he sold his father and almost everybody else on flying. He sold Hitler on his kind of flying. In fact, he sold everybody but his mother. And oh, by the way, would you like to meet Don's mother now? Maybe she's changed her mind about Don's kind of flying. 
Here's the mother of Don Gentile, speaking from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am just the one American mother, just like millions of other from you. I am proud to my son, but the water, but the in the air, in the ground, on the sea, there are boys who fight to save all kind life we know. I didn't prove, uh, I didn't prove the Don uh, fly at first, but I understand now why he had to go to war. He and new sons are fighting for our homes, our homes. All I can say is, God bless him them tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Gentile. And next week on Words at War, Mr. Fadiman? I'll tell you about next week's program in a moment, Jack. Right now, a good thought from our government for everyone who has a service man or woman overseas. You know what Christmas means to these young men and women. You know that Christmas won't be Christmas unless they get gifts from home in time for Christmas. The Army and Navy is accepting gift packages for mailing between September 15th and October 15th without the usual written requests from the servicemen. But you're urged to do these things. Wrap your gifts securely in strong boxes. Address them properly with waterproof ink if you can, and just to be on the safe side, enclose the address on the inside of the package as well. Finally, mail as soon after September 15th as you can. If everyone waits until the last moment, a lot of gift packages won't reach their destinations in time. So start to work right now. Make sure this will be the best Christmas possible for every American boy and girl overseas. Thank you. Next week on the Johnson's Wax program, Words at War... We bring you a dramatization based on Rex Warner's latest novel. In this moving story, entitled The Return of the Traveler, the spirit of a dead soldier returns to ask, Why was I killed? The answers he receives will give you a memorable half hour. Now, this is Clifton Fadiman inviting you to be with us next week at this time. Until then, goodbye. <laughs> Tonight's dramatization of One Man Air Force was written by Gerald Holland and featured Lawson Zerbe as Don Gentile. Mrs. Gentile was heard tonight in person, speaking from Cincinnati, Ohio. The music was composed and conducted by Morris Mamorski, and the production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Next week, the makers of Johnson's Wax bring you a dramatization of The Return of the Traveler on Words at War. Jack Costello speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>